Hi everyone, welcome to our bedtime story time for, I don't have my glasses on, Wednesday, April 29th. Um, like I said yesterday, we'll continue reading Harry Potter. Um, we're going to start on chapter 14, Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback. And if you haven't checked your um, seesaw, I sent you a PDF with the book. So if you'd like to read along with me, you can do so. Just pause and go check that out. And otherwise, I will begin reading tonight. We'll see how far we get with our time. I know that the chapters, if you remember, are quite long. So we won't make the whole chapter, but we'll see how far we get. All right. So remember, yesterday when we stopped off, it says that, so you mean stone? the stone is only safe as long as Quirrell stands up to Snape. And Ron says, it'll be gone by next Tuesday, as in, he, we can't rely on him at all. He's awful, right? So it starts out with chapter 14 saying, Quirrell, however, must have been braver than they thought. In the weeks that followed, he did seem to be getting paler and thinner, but it didn't look as though he'd cracked yet. Every time they passed the third floor corridor, Harry, Ron, and Hermione would press their ears to the door to check that Fluffy was still growling inside. Snape was sweeping about in his usual bad temper which surely meant that the stone was still safe. Whenever Harry passed Quirrell these days, he gave him an encouraging sort of smile, and Ron had started telling people off for laughing at Quirrell's stutter. Hermione, however, had more on her mind than the sorcerer's stone. She had started drawing up revision timetables and color-coding all her notes. Harry and Ron wouldn't have minded, but she kept nagging them to do the same. Hermione, the exams are ages away. Ten weeks, Hermione snapped. That's not ages. That's like a second to Nicholas Flamel. But we're not 600 years old, Ron reminded her. Anyway, what are you revising for? You already know it all. What am I revising for? Are you mad? You realize we need to pass these exams to get into a second year? They're very important. I should have started studying a month ago. I don't know what's gotten into me. Unfortunately, the teachers seemed to be thinking along the same lines as Hermione. They piled so much homework on them that the Easter holidays weren't nearly as much fun as the Christmas ones. It was hard to relax with Hermione next to you, reciting the 12 uses of dragon's blood or practicing wand movements. Moaning and yawning, Harry and Ron spent most of their free time in the library with her, trying to get through all their extra work. Do you guys feel like Ron and Hermione right now? I feel like Ron and Hermione and Harry. We're trying to get through all of our work, right? I'll never remember this, Ron burst out one afternoon, throwing down his quill and looking longingly out of the library window. It was the first really fine day they'd had in months. The sky was clear, forget-me-not blue, and there was a feeling in the air of summer coming. Harry, who was looking up Dittany and 1,000 magical herbs and fungi, didn't look up until he heard Ron say, Hagrid, what are you doing in the library? Hagrid shuffled into view, hiding something behind his back. He looked very out of place in his moleskin overcoat. Just looking, he said in a shifty voice that got their interest at once. And what are you up to? He suddenly looked suspicious. You're not still looking for Nicholas Flamel, are you? Oh, we found out who he is ages ago, said Ron impressively. And we know that the dog's guarding. What the dog is guarding? It's the sorcerer's... Shh, Hagrid said. He looked around quickly to see if anyone was listening. Don't go shouting about it. What's the matter with you? There are a few things we wanted to ask you, as a matter of fact, said Harry, about what's guarding the stone apart from Fluffy. Shh, said Hagrid again. Listen, come and see me later. I'm not promising I'll tell you anything, mind, but don't go rabbiting about in here. Students aren't supposed to know. They'll think I've told you. See you later then, said Harry. Hagrid shuffled off. What was he hiding behind his back, said Hermione thoughtfully. Do you think it had anything to do with the stone? I'm going to see what section he was in, said Ron, who had enough of who had had enough of working. He came back a minute later with a pile of books in his arms and slammed them down on the table. Dragons, he whispered. Haggard was looking up stuff about dragons. Look at these. Dragon species of Great Britain and Ireland, from egg to inferno, a dragon's keeper guide. Haggard's always wanted a dragon. He told me so the first time I ever met him, said Harry. But it's against our laws, said Ron. Dragon breeding was outlawed by Warlock's Convention of 1709. Everyone knows that. It's hard to stop muggles noticing us if we're keeping dragons in the back garden. Anyway, you can't tame dragons. It's dangerous. You should see the burns Charlie's got off wild ones in Romania. But there aren't wild dragons in Britain, said Harry. Of course there are, said Ron. Common Welsh Green and Hybridian Blacks. The Ministry of Magic has a job hushing them up, I can tell you. Our lot have to keep up putting spells on muggles who've spotted them to make them forget. 
So what on earth is Hagrid up to? Said Hermione. And just to show you the picture, the illustration of the dragon eggs on this page. Ooh, there you go. So you can see all the different dragon eggs. Ooh. When they knocked on the door of the gamekeeper, gamekeeper's hut an hour later, they were surprised to see that all the curtains were closed. Hagrid called, who is it, before he let them in and then shut the door quickly behind him. It was stiffingly hot inside, stiflingly. <laughs> I can't read, guys. My mind is burnt today. It was stiflingly hot inside. Even though it was such a warm day, there was a blazing fire in the grate. Hagrid made them tea and offered them stoked sandwiches, which they refused. So you wanted to ask me something? Yes, said Harry. There was no point beating around the bush. We were wondering if you could tell us what's guarding the Sorcerer's Stone apart from Fluffy. Wow, they just like really went out there and asked it, didn't they? Hagrid frowned at him. Of course I can't, he said. Number one, I don't know myself. Number two, you know too much already, so I wouldn't tell you if I could. That stone's here for a good reason. It was almost stolen out of Gringotts. I suppose you worked on that all. I suppose you've worked that out and all. Beats me how you even know about Fluffy. Oh, come on, Hagrid. You might not want to tell us, but you do know, and you know everything that goes on around here, said Hermione in a warm, flattering voice. Hagrid's beard twitched, and they could tell he was smiling. We only wondered who had done the guarding, really, Hermione went on. We wondered who, yeah, we wondered who Dumbledore had trusted enough to help him, apart from you. Hagrid's chest swelled at these last words. Harry and Ron beamed at Hermione. Well, I don't suppose it could hurt to tell you that, let's see, he borrowed Fluffy from me. Then some of the teachers did enchantments, Professor Sprout, Professor Flitwick, Professor McGonagall. He ticked them off his fingers. Professor Quirrell. And Dumbledore himself did something, of course. Hang on, I've forgotten someone. Oh, yeah, Professor Snape. Snape? Yeah! You're not stolen about that one, are you? Look, Snape helped protect the stone. He's not about to steal it. Harry knew Ron and Hermione were thinking the same as he was. If Snape had been on, in on protecting the stone, it must have been easy to find out how the other teachers had guarded it. He probably knew everything, except, it seemed, Quirrell's spell and how to get past Fluffy. Mmm. You're the only one who knows how to get past Fluffy, aren't you, Hagrid? said Harry anxiously. And you wouldn't tell anyone, would you? Not even one of the teachers? Not a soul knows except me and Dumbledore, said Hagrid proudly. Well, that's something, Harry muttered to the others. Hagrid, can we have a window open? I'm boiling. Can't, Harry. Sorry, said Hagrid. Harry noticed him glance at the fire. Harry looked at it, too. Hagrid, what's that? But he already knew what it was. In the very heart of the fire, underneath the kettle, was a huge black egg. Uh, said Hagrid, fiddling nervously with his beard. That's, er, where did you get it, Hagrid? Said Ron, crouching over the fire to get a closer look at the egg. It must have cost you a fortune. Won it, said Hagrid. Last night, I was down in the village having a few drinks and got into a game of cards with a stranger. Think he was quite gra <laughs> think he was quite glad to get rid of it. To be honest, it's hard to read Hagrid's language because he cuts off so many words. I can't read it ahead of time. But what are you going to do with it when it's hatched? Said Hermione. Well, I've been doing some reading. Said Hagrid, pulling a large book from under his pillow. Got this out of the library. Dragon breeding for pleasure and profit. It's a bit out of date, of course, but it's all in here. Keep the egg in the fire because their mothers breathe on them. See. And when it hatches, feed it on a bucket of brandy mixed with chicken blood every half hour. And see here how to recognize different eggs? What I got there is a Norwegian Ridgeback. They're rare, them. He looked very pleased with himself, but Hermione didn't. Hagrid, you live in a wooden house, she said. But Hagrid wasn't listening. He was humbling merrily as he struck the fire. <laughs> so there's Hagrid. He's got himself a dragon, a dragon egg. In a wooden hut, and he has to have a fire going all the time. That sounds like it'll be a really big success. <laughs> so now they had something else to worry about. What might happen to Hagrid if anyone found out he was hiding an illegal dragon in his hut? Wonder what it's like to have a peaceful life, Ron sighed, as evening after evening they struggled through all the extra homework they were getting. Hermione had now started to making revision tables, revision timetables for Harry and Ron too. It was driving them mad. Then, one breakfast time, Hedwig brought Harry another note from Hagrid. He had written only two words. It's hatching. 
Ron wanted to skip herbology and go straight down to the hut. Hermione wouldn't hear of it. Hermione, how many times in our lives are we going to see a dragon hatching? We've got lessons, we'll get in trouble. And that's nothing to do with Hagrid's going to be in, and that's, oh jeez. We've got lessons, we'll get into trouble. And that's nothing to what Hagrid's going to be in when someone finds out what he's doing. Shut up, Harry whispered. Malfoy was only a few feet away and he had stopped dead to listen. How much had he heard? Harry didn't like the look on Malfoy's face at all. Ron and Hermione argued all the way to Herbology, and in the end, Hermione agreed to run down to Hagrid's with the other two during the morning break. When the bell sounded from the castle at the end of their lesson, the three of them dropped their trowels at once and hurried through the grounds to the edge of the forest. Hagrid greeted them, looking flushed and excited. It's nearly out, he ushered them inside. Here's a picture of Malfoy spying. Little rotten scoundrel. Uh, there you go. Oh. It's hard with that glare. The egg was laying on the table. There were deep cracks in it. Something was moving inside. A funny clicking noise was coming from it. They all drew the chairs up to the table and watched with bated breath. All at once, there was a scraping noise and the egg split open. The baby dragon flopped onto the table. It wasn't exactly pretty. Harry thought it looked like a crumpled black umbrella. Its spiny wings were huge compared to its skinny jet body, and it had a long snout with wide nostrils, stubs of horns, and bulging orange eyes. It sneezed. A couple of sparks flew out of its snout. Isn't he beautiful? Hagrid murmured. He reached out a hand to stroke the dragon's head. It snapped at his fingers, showing its pointed fangs. Bless him, look, he knows his mummy, said Hagrid. <laughs> Hagrid, said Hermione, how fast do Norwegian Ridgebacks grow exactly? Hagrid was about to answer when the color suddenly drained from his face. He leapt to his feet and ran to the window. What's the matter? Someone was looking through the gap in the curtains. It's a kid. He's running back up to the school. Harry bolted to the door and looked out. Even at a distance, there was no mistaking him. Malfoy had seen the dragon. Ooh, we'll read this page and then I think we'll pause for the night. <gasps> I love this next picture. Okay. Something about the smile lurking on Malfoy's face during the next week made Harry, Ron, and Hermione very nervous. They spent most of their free time in Hagrid's darkened hut, trying to reason with him. Just let it go, Harry urged. Let him free. I can't, said Hagrid. He's too little. He'd die. They looked at the dragon. It had grown three times in length in just a week. Smoke kept furling out of its nostrils. Hagrid hadn't been doing this ga his gamekeeping duties because the dragon was keeping him so busy. There were empty brandy bottles and chicken feathers all over the floor. He'd been feeding him. I've decided to call him Norbert, said Hagrid, looking at the dragon with misty eyes. He really knows me now. Watch. Norbert! Norbert, where's mummy? He's lost his marbles, Ron muttered in Harry's ear. Hagrid, said Harry loudly, give it a fortnight and Norbert's going to be as long as your house. Malfoy could go to Dumbledore at any moment. Hagrid bit his lip. I, I know I can't keep him forever, but I just can't dump him. I can't. Harry suddenly turned to Ron. Charlie, he said. You're losing it too, said Ron. I'm Ron, remember? No, Charlie, your brother Charlie, in Romania, studying dragons. We could send Norbert to him. Charlie can take care of him and then put him back in the wild. Brilliant, said Ron. How about it, Hagrid? And in the end, Hagrid agreed that they could send an owl to Charlie to ask him. That's a good place to pause. Um, I don't know if this is going to be Norbert, but what we have coming up is an illustration of the size and greatness of a Norwegian Ridgeback. So at the bottom it says Norwegian Ridgeback, and here we can see how big they are. Look at the chimney there of the castle, and that's how big he is. So I don't know if he gets that big. I don't know if that's where we're heading, but holy moly, I would not want one of those in my apartment, even as a baby. Even as a baby, he shot sparks. Okay, friends, we will pause there. We will continue tomorrow with chapter 14. Have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow.